How to eulogize the most important man in your life. Step 1. Use careful restraint when calling him a pimp, even though his middle name was Leroy and he had a penchant for Cadillacs. It's just too easy. Instead, let's go back to September of 1918 where it all began. Walter Leroy Pimpsaw Selstrom came kicking and screaming into the world he would soon make his biatch. After all, it's what pimps do, no? The humble beginnings were, as they say, humble. Wally would soon learn the art of fashioning hand-me-down skates into shoes. This was in the midst of the Great Depression, long before they could afford goldfish in their platform boots. This was also during the time that we see Wally on his first mode of transport, a donkey. Don't worry, true believers, this story warms up rather quickly, especially after a Model T scares the crap out of him, literally. It was on this occasion as siblings wrote a song to the artist soon to be known as Pimp Sauce. Pardon the Swedish. Automobile bis krim de la 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 drito buxa. Rough translation, the car scared Wally, Wally shat himself. Again, humble beginnings. Even Superman's allowed to have a bad day, right? We fast forward to WW2 where we find Wally, or Hilly as they call him, has upgraded his donkey to a Jeep. We see Hilly driving through the French countryside, wind in his hair, wrapping his contact info around pennies. These pennies find their way to the feet of single ladies. The legend of Pimp Sauce is born. Later that day, he was captured by the Nazis and forced to watch German Scheisse films against his will. Needless to say, he convinced the Nazis their films were crap and negotiated the terms of their surrender. You're welcome, America. When the Führer says, me is the master race, me higher, higher, right in the Führer space. Pimp Sauce went back home for some long overdue R&R and met the girl of his dreams. But much like Shania Twain, she wasn't impressed much. I have one green eye and one blue eye. <laughs> Who does he think he is? A young Bing Crosby? Again, humble beginnings. His superpowers weren't fully realized. In the end, though, she was not immune to his mojo. They eventually got married and had two adorable children. The youngest one in curls had three of her own. And that's where your humble narrator comes into the picture. Gramps and me were BFFs from the onset. He taught me so much. How to get a clean, close shave without a razor blade in the razor. The appreciation of polka music. And how to drive a total Mustang in the garage. Gramps traded in his army jeep and beat up Mustang for a city bus. If the words, Lake Street, Hennepin Avenue, ring a bell, that's why. As much as he loved his bus, though, he needed something more suitable for his superhero keister. So he moved on to hotel management and a brand new Cadillac. The legend of Pimp Sauce is finally realized. It was the summer of 76, and Grandpa and I loved us some foot racing. It was during one of our many foot races in the parking lot of the Motel 6, I was deemed the fastest boy in the universe by myself. And understandably, he was nervous about some six-year-old competition, so he tried to kill me and make it look like an accident. Later that day, I had to go potty, and he left the seat up on purpose so that I would fall in butt first and be eaten by the toilet monster. His diabolical scheme almost worked, but he rescued me at the last minute before the toilet monster had me for dinner. Gramps just laughed it off, but I was not amused. I gave him the silent treatment until I was bribed with some ice cream. Come to think of it, Gramps got me hooked on lots of stuff. Video games, coffee and donuts, aka fat pills, beer and sardines, and last but certainly not least, the Waffle House. I felt like a big boy walking across the parking lot to the Waffle House with my dollar in hand ordering the all-star breakfast. I later discovered he was trying to get me arrested for doing the old dine and dash. The menu item in question cost more than a buck and he knew it. His plan was foiled though when the waitresses chipped in to pay for my meal instead of calling the popo. Well played, Pimp Sauce. Well played. Moving on to the 80s, where there was a video game on every corner, Gramps would line my pockets with quarters. The addiction became so bad, I had to check myself into the gamer wing of the Betty Ford Clinic. Pac-Man fever? Oh, I had it bad. Okay, so he never really tried to kill me or get me hooked on anything. He loved me and I loved him right back. Some might call it my first man crush. A bromance in the making. He taught me how to love. He taught me patience, humility, grace under pressure, and a rock-solid work ethic. He gave me my first DJ residency as a toddler. At six, I was an assistant maintenance man with my own keychain. My first job out of high school was made possible by him. He was also there to help me fulfill my lifelong dream of being a radio DJ. To say he was the Barbara Hershey to my Bette Midler is a gross understatement. Yes, we both Watch beaches together, and yes, we both cried like babies. Today, though, I'm not filled with tears. I'm filled with enormous gratitude and happiness that I got to know and learn from this great man. In the afterlife, I picture him being handed the keys to a sparkling new Cadillac and driving home to see his family and the girl of his dreams. Walter Leroy Pimpsaw Selstrom, you will be missed, but never forgotten. I love you. Fellow pimps, if you have a 40, pour it now.